Yeah, and so I think it's probably worth calling out too on the last point. We, we know there are two risk factors here. So one is the actual knock-on effect of the traumatic event, you know, that I'm sore and how it's managed. And if I don't feel supported at work, you know, we know that return to work interventions are improved or outcomes are improved if the work is perceived to be a supportive space. The secondary risk that we know contributes to secondary uh, psychological conditions or psychological injury is actually tied to just the return to work process itself, that the whole process can be really deeply confusing Um, it it looks like the opposite to autonomy in a lot of ways. You have a case manager, you know, you get to choose who you see as your treating practitioner, but then there's all these other people contacting you and hassling you. And again, if we look to the research more broadly, the more referrals we see and the more scans we see, the worse prognosis. So if you get bounced around for another check, another thing, and each experience you've got maybe questionable bedside manner, which again, we know impacts outcomes. You know, there's a whole bunch of touch points that are uh, put into effect once we go into the claims process that, again, are risk factors in and of themselves from a psychological point of view. And with that in mind, um, you know, the real direct exposure there for an employer is just these terrible return to work outcomes that drive up their premiums, that make them short staff, that feed into a bad workplace culture, 